Hello there. Welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, your host. I am the proud pastor of this, the New Mountaintop Church, and we're right here on Sunday mornings live at 9.30 a.m. I'd love for you to join us for a live worship experience. If you live anywhere near the Atlanta metropolitan area, hey, listen, I would love to have you as our special guest. We're only about 20 minutes from Six Flags over Georgia. Everybody knows where that is. And we'd love to have you to come and share with us. Please, by all means, like, share, subscribe, tear that subscription button all the way up so that you'll be notified every time new content is loaded to the channel. So last week we started a mini series entitled Seven Habits of a Godly Life. And I shared with you the first three. In this particular episode, I want to move to the next three and then we'll wrap it up on next week. But by all means, make sure that you let someone else know about this teaching. I think that it will help them to live a life that is even more godly, that is even more fulfilling. And after all, isn't that really what it's about? Pleasing God with our lives. That's what he put us on the earth to do. So here's the fourth of the seven points. That is service. Service is so important to living a fulfilling, godly life. You know, really, the Christian experience is really all about service. I think of the Great Commission when Jesus commanded us, go into all of the world, teach, baptize, and all of that. It was all about service. In fact, whenever you look at the New Testament church, all you see is service from the people giving and laying down their personal prized possessions at the feet of the apostles. Even from the Old Testament priest not only wore the priestly garments, they also made sacrifices. But after the sacrifice was made, the priest would then go and serve that food that was left over from the sacrifice. The, the deacons and that whole diaconate ministry was a product of service because the priests were overloaded with their duties and responsibilities, even in Old Testament times. When the New Testament rolls around, the 12 apostles come together and they say, hey, listen, there is no need that we should serve. Uh, Leave the ministry of the word to serve tables. Let us find seven men full of the Holy Spirit to appoint over this business. So the entirety of the Christian experience and the entirety of the church is all about service. Service not only to God, but also service to humanity. Well, serving others is important, and here's why. Because serving others is a way to really show love and compassion and to imitate Christ's example. You know, as I think about imitating Christ's example, I'm thinking of when he removed his towel, got down on his knees, and began to wash his disciples' feet. Christ is our model for service. And in like manner, when we serve, we behave and conduct ourselves in a most Christ-like way. And that's what we want to do. So in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 10, verse number 45, listen to what Jesus says. For he says, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The whole of Christ's purpose in coming to the earth was all about serving. That he could not serve, watch this, not just the elite, not just one in particular, not even just God, but literally to serve all. And he came not to be served, but he came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So when you really want to talk about service in terms of habits of godly living, a godly lifestyle, a godly attitude, notice the enormity of Christ's sacrifice. It was not just a minimal sacrifice. He gave everything he had to become ransom for many. And that is to say that our sins might be forgiven 
that we might be made free through the blood of Christ, through the shedding of his blood on the cross at Calvary, he became the ransom for the enormous sins of mankind. And through that example and model, he served many. And guess what? He continues to serve many because many are still coming to Christ as a result of his love and our willingness to share his love with others so that they too may know about the love of Christ. So what an example we have for godly living through the son of God himself, that he would give his life that all of us could have life eternal. That's so powerful. Well, here's number five of our habits for a godly lifestyle. It is generosity. I can't say enough about generosity. You know, I'm still thinking about that passage. I just share it with you concerning the generosity of Christ and how he was so willing to give all of himself. That's how our lives ought to be, that we ought to be willing to give of our resources, our time, our efforts, our knowledge, our skills, and anything God has prospered us with, we should be willing to give it away. So the scripture is so powerful about giving. You know, when we think of giving, many people will draw up. They, they think in terms of the church or the preacher, or the pastor or televangelist is after my money. But the truth is, while some may be, all are not. You see, giving generously to others is actually an outward reflection of God's inner character. And it demonstrates our trust in God as our provider. Giving is not about what others get. It's about what we're willing to give as an honor in exchange for the goodness of God at work in our lives. You know, the psalmist once quipped, what shall I render unto God for all of his mercy? You know what? There's nothing we can do to ever repay God for his generosity. However, our faithfulness to God through giving of our time, our talent, our tenth and the like is a good starting point to be able to express the goodness of God in our lives as we walk out our everyday lives. And so the scripture is very clear concerning a giving lifestyle. It is definitely a godly habit. The apostle Paul spoke about this to the church at Corinth. It's recorded in 2 Corinthians chapter number 9 and verse number 7. And by the way, there is a handout that you can find in the description box below that will take you deeper than I have time to go in this time together. But I want you to make sure you grab that PDF handout. It has wonderful discovery questions, scripture references that go far beyond what I'm sharing in this particular moment. You can also share that with someone and start your own little Bible study or watch party, if you will, and have a discussion about it with your family. So I'm going to make, make sure that you get that at the end of the video. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 7, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. So the decision to give is an individual decision. However, we should not give with reluctance. We should give from our heart. We should not give because we feel uh, more or less a sense of obligation, shame, embarrassment, etc. But we should give from a cheerful heart. And here's how giving can become reluctant, how it can feel as if it is under compulsion. It's when our eyes are on people and our ears are open to people, as opposed to our eyes being on God and our ears being attuned to God. Giving is all about God, whether we're talking about finances, whether we're talking about favors, whether we're talking about time, whether we're talking about you helping your neighbor with a fallen tree or what have you, or just common courtesy of exchanging pleasantries with a stranger. 
Giving is all about God. And we give out of a sense of thanksgiving to the God who has made all things possible. And so when you look at giving from that perspective and take your eyes and ears off of people, then giving becomes personal worship that you want to do to thank God for how amazingly good he has been to you. By the way, has he been amazingly good to you? Well, I imagine that he has. If you're able to hear and see me right now, wherever you may be in the world, it is evidence that God has been good to you. Not because it's me, but because you're able to hear God's word, you're able to see in color, you're able to hear with your ears, you're able to process and to cognitively concentrate on this material that can change your life. So that is evidence that God has indeed been good to you. And if God has indeed been good to you, then you should make it your decision and obligation to give, not out of a sense of damnation, persecution, criticism, but because of your intimate relationship with the infinite God. That's what motivates giving. Here's number six. Number six is a little tough, but it is a necessary habit of a godly life. And that is forgiveness. Forgiveness is not that easy, but it is absolutely essential to a godly life. So forgiveness is an essential part of Christian life as we have been forgiven by God through Christ's sacrifice. And we talked about that a bit earlier. You and I are the product of the forgiveness of the Almighty God. And this is what Paul says to us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Paul writes these words. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, bear with each other again and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Now, we don't really like to talk a lot about forgiveness because we really like to concentrate on who hurt us and how we felt and we like to live in those feelings. But Paul says to us, you do not have the right to live in unforgiveness. This is tough teaching right here, but it will grow you and mature you if you take it and use it. We don't have the right to live in unforgiveness. We don't have the right to hold on to grudges, but we are obligated per the scriptures to let it go. And once again, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has any grievance against someone. So this lesson has been a bit tough because it's challenged us to forgive it's challenged us to give. And those are two tough topics that we don't really like to spend a whole lot of time talking about. I want to know from you in the comments, which of these at this very moment in your life do you find the most challenging? Giving, forgiving, or which one? Which do you find the most challenging? Is it service? Is it giving? Is it forgiving? Well, whatever it is, I want you to know that God has strength for your challenge. And by the way, you need a challenging word in your life. You need something that makes you think about where you are, how you're living, what you're doing, so that you can continue to grow and mature and develop and become all God would have you to be. I'm Bishop Littman. And you've been watching the Midweek Refill. Make sure you check the links below for the PDF where you can be challenged even further to grow in your faith as you live a godly life. Hey, I'll be back next week with the final of Habits of a Godly Life. Love you. Take care of yourself. And don't forget, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, share this with somebody, hit the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified every time 
new content is loaded. And 9.30 a.m. every Sunday, we're right here live and in living color for an impactful worship experience. Hey, I love you. God bless you.